So the, one of the fascinating elements of the Book of Numbers is that the oldest written piece of the Bible that was ever found is actually taken from the Book of Numbers. Well, the opening books of the uh, Old Testament, they take the names that uh, we familiarly give them nowadays from the, the titles they have in the ancient Greek translation of the Old Testament that's called the Septuagint. And the book of Numbers, uh, arithmoi means numbers, of course the word from which we get arithmetic. It is called Numbers because it concerns a census, a numbering of the people of Israel at the beginning of the story where Moses is told to to go and number and count all those who are of military age, who are capable of defending themselves. And here we get our numbers. Those enrolled at the tribe of Reuben were 46,500. Verse 23, those enrolled at the tribe of Simeon were 59,300. Verse 25, those enrolled at the tribe of Gad were 45,650. Big numbers. Part of the book is full of numbers and is quite dry and boring. The reason it's full of numbers is if you belong to a small clan, you want to think that your clan got mentioned a long time ago. And the whole trick of the Book of Numbers is to mention as many names as it possibly can so that the people at the time it was written could say, ah, we were there at the start. It's a little bit like Americans all wanting to be able to trace themselves back to the people on the Mayflower. Uh, the opening chapters of the book, until about halfway through chapter 10, uh, are very much full of this kind of detail, uh, a kind of census list of the Israelite tribes, uh, lots of details as to how the, um, uh, the Israelite tribes are to be kind of organised and arranged for their uh, journeys through the, through the wilderness. About halfway through chapter 10, the, um, the Israelites then set out on their journey from Mount Sinai. Everyone knows that the people of Israel were supposed to have wandered for 40 years between leaving Egypt and being let into the Promised Land. Well, in the Book of Numbers, we get a thing called the Wilderness Itinerary, which is a list of all the places they camped. It tells you how they were to arrange the camp, they tells you where the different groups were to, were to put down their tents, and the sort of flags they were to show, but the interesting thing is that all these stopping points are listed, the places they stopped during the 40 years, and if you look at old maps, they could be perfectly serious survey maps, anytime say up to the 1900, and you will often find this text from the Book of Numbers drawn out as if it was a historical detail. Some of them are, are, some of them are actually still towns. Uh, but most of them are just locations in the desert. And during the 19th century, lots of people went out to the desert in Sinai. There was a major expedition launched from Britain in the 1860s, and they went around digging in, the, in where they thought these sites were, hoping that they would find pottery and so forth. And of course, every time they did find a pot, they never assumed that it was the last time the Bedouin were camping there. They said, ah, this is the pot that came from the time when the people of Israel camped there as recounted in the Book of Numbers. It's one specific part of Numbers which a lot of people who at least occasionally go to church have heard and some of them even know by heart because it features very often at the formal liturgical ending of a proper service and this is actually a phrase and blessing taken from the book of Number from chapter 6. The Lord spoke to Moses, speak to Aaron and his sons, thus shall you bless the people of Israel. Say to them, the Lord bless you and protect you, the Lord deal kindly and graciously with you, the Lord bestow his favor upon you and grant you peace. Thus they shall link my name with the people of Israel and I will bless them. Yeah, this is the so-called Aaronite blessing because Aaron was given this blessing and it was one of the prerogatives of the priests in Israel to use this blessing. Okay, according to the biblical narrative, the story of Moses happened in the 14th, 13th century BCE. It depends a little bit when you exactly date Moses. 
But most scholars and the, the analysis of this text show that they are written later, as late as the 5th, 4th century BCE. And now the, the question is, what do we know about the centuries in between, between Moses and writing down, or at least the, the final form of it? And fortunately for the Aaronite blessing, they found in a tomb in Jerusalem, an uh, amulet which was given to this uh, buried person and the amulet was engraved with an inscription, it's a silver amulet, and there you find a version of this Aaronite blessing and this is the earliest biblical text so far known which is preserved in a, in a material way from a very early uh, age. So this is the 7th century BCE. You may know the story of Samson, which is actually in the book of Judges, so it's not in Numbers. But in order to understand the story of Samson, there's some important background that we, uh, that we need from the book of Numbers. So Samson, we know, is the guy with the long hair, uh, eventually has it chopped off, and when he has the hair chopped off, he loses his strength. But why is it that he loses his strength when his hair is cut off? Well, number six helps us to understand the background to that. Because number six describes the Nazarite vow, and that's the vow that Samson takes, or well, his parents even, uh, while he's in the womb. Um, Samson uh, is a Nazarite. And number six tells us what this vow involves. So at the beginning of number six, the Lord spoke to Moses saying, speak to the Israelites and say to them, when either men or women make a special vow, the vow of a Nazarite, all the days of their Nazarite vow, no razor shall come upon the head until the time is completed for which they separate themselves to the Lord. They shall be holy, they shall let the locks of the head grow long. So part of the Nazarite vow, part of consecrating themselves to the Lord is to let their hair grow long. So Samson uh, takes this vow and in letting his hair be chopped off by Delilah, by this woman who comes in and sort of uh, tempts him, uh, he ends up breaking his Nazarite vow and it's at that point that he loses his strength. So a bit more behind the story that we all know from the book of Numbers there. In Numbers 21 it talks about an event that happened whereby a lot of people were being punished by God, by death, and yet God provided a way out. And the way out was that he put a snake on a stick and said, whoever looks at this snake will be saved. This is the way that it puts it. Moses prayed for the people and the Lord said to Moses, make a poisonous serpent and set it on a pole. And everyone who is bitten by a snake, because that was the way that people were dying, everyone who is bitten shall look at it and live. This uh, image of a snake on a pole is, has endured and is still used today by medical societies and that sort of thing. It represents healing. And uh, there are a number of possible backgrounds to that image of a snake uh, twirled around a pole, but one of them is Numbers chapter 21 right here.